reach the island. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, well, first off, let me, uh, let me go ahead and uh, describe to you guys what Paranoia is. Uh, Paranoia is the role-playing game of a darkly humorous future. Imagine if the Hell 9000 were placed in charge of the Dome Cities of Logan's Run. The bureaucracy was straight out of Brazil, and Douglas Adams wrote the whole thing. So, imagine that kind of world. Uh, the world of Paranoia is uh, set uh, within the various sectors of Alpha Complex, which is an immense, futuristic underground city controlled by uh, the computer. Uh, hail computer! Hail computer! Oh, you guys are up on this, awesome. Uh, the computer is a uh, psychotic civil servant AI construct, and uh, the computer's made happiness mandatory. In fact, failure to be happy is uh, punishable by summary execution, as are many other things in our game. The computer, of course, fears a number of threats to its perfect society, most notably commies, mutants, and traitors. Boo! Boo! To deal with these threats, both real and imagined, threat computer employs troubleshooters, uh, whose job is to solve problems. They go out, find trouble, and shoot it. <laughs> players are troubleshooters, or at least uh, one of our player classes is troubleshooters, and uh, that's the character class that we're going to be covering here today. Uh, troubleshooters are almost invariably mutants, of course, and members of secret societies, and so are traitors of the very sort feared most by a friend computer. Uh, PCs are uh, you know, often given comprehensible or self-contradicting mission goals, dangerous, faulty, or experimental equipment, uh, futuristic gizmos and equipment, uh, such as hand grenades marked throw hard, as uh, uh, nuclear hand grenades marked throw hard, as well as uh, contradictory missions and their secret science. Uh, paranoia missions are often fatal, uh, but that's all right because uh, the characters in Paranoia have clones of themselves. So uh, once uh, once you die, all you have to do is you go check back in and get your the troubleshooter credo is stay alert, trust no one, and keep your laser handy, and that is a, a very good idea for tomorrow's game. Uh, now, our LARP, of course, uh, is uh, based on uh, Mongoose Publishing's tabletop RPG. Uh, hopefully, everybody kind of knows what a LARP is. Uh, now, we're, we're not, you know, like Vampire or like those Boffer LARPs or anything like that. It's all going to be item cards and dice rolling, and uh, you know, so. You don't have to throw tennis balls and you know, match miss or anything like that. <laughs> I, I, I guess unless that's how you eat your kicks. I don't know. Uh, to each their own. Um, what makes our game uh, so unique as a LARP is that unlike many LARPs, our game is designed to be fast, fun, and require little to no GM interference. In fact, we don't even have GMs in the traditional sense. Um, we, uh, our design philosophy uh, kind of really looks more towards uh, video games like World of Warcraft or Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, where players are uh, a lot of roam in kind of an open-ended sandbox uh, play environment, uh, choosing when and how they accomplish quests, as well as what types of uh, side quests and other activities that they'll participate in. So there are now three available character classes. Two of them are new, high programmers and deep cover internal security agents. We're going to have panels covering those two uh, following this one. Um, and if you are interested in one of those alternate classes, uh, you actually have to attend the panel, I'm afraid. Uh, this panel, however, will teach the core and most prevalent character class in Paranoid Live, the hardworking and dedicated troubleshooter. <laughs> <laughs> Play is largely team-based for the troubleshooters, and players will have lots of opportunity to stab each other in the back, shoot each other in the face with laser guns, and uh, you know, complete a variety of uh, both fun and safe missions. <laughs> Uh, I can't think of any other LARPs that let you do that. Uh, really, our, our game is a massively multiplayer offline live action RPG. Uh, we're hoping uh, we built the game for 100 players this year. Uh, we had uh, 70 last year. Uh, so hopefully, it'll just uh, keep on getting better and bigger. All right, uh, Troubleshooter Play is um, kind of game -esque. It's fast paced, it's violent. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, for fans of you know the kind of uh, adventure style of gaming. You know, best exemplified by you know like classic Dungeons and Dragons. Things like that. You know, if you like going out and questing and you know kicking some ass, then uh, you know, the troubleshooter is the character class for you. So this year cycle, uh, our tale follows the aftermath of last year's cycle's uh, kaiju budget brawl. Yay! Yay. Woo! Yay! Where after blowing the entire budget and most of the resources of Alpha Complex's sector con to create giant robots and mutants to fight each other. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was raw. <laughs> uh, the secret societies realized that maybe it was time to bury the Vibro hatchet. And that working to, and uh, yeah, often. Uh, working together instead of constantly fighting could be more profitable and result in fewer fatalities. So 
They hijack the compact, limitless, universal export system, normally used to deliver goods and paychecks, and instead began using it to run a black market in sector time. Unfortunately, there was a savage tour amongst them. One of the secret society heads uh, placed evidence in the clue system to frame everyone but himself. Something went terribly wrong and purple knockout gas, uh, a bomb full of purple knockout gas exploded. Uh, everybody, of course, knows that purple knockout gas erases your memories for the last 24 hours. So who done it? Who is the traitor? Who is he working for? Where did, he, where did the crime even take place? We don't know. Nobody knows. Heck, we sealed that information up in, uh, in envelopes uh, weeks ago. We're, we're not, we don't even know. It's true. We have no idea who did it. <laughs> but the evidence is in the clue system, and now the high programmers are trying to figure it out before the internal, uh, before internal security agents start uh, disappearing suspects. Bugs, <laughs> jackboot bugs. Yes, often. Well, that's one at least. So, life in Alpha Complex. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, how, the, uh, how the characters work. Uh, every troubleshooter has a security clearance, a secret society, and uh, they're on a key. Now, in Alpha Complex, there's a uh, chromatic scale of uh, uh, security clearance. On the low end, you have the infrareds, or the great unwashed rattle of Alpha Complex. And uh, for our game's purposes, those are the non-playing convention goers. Rubbed out their minds. <laughs> After that, it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And finally, ultraviolet for the high programmers. Now, anything above your security clearance is off limits to you. For example, see a blue pen, your security clearance level is orange, better not mess with it. Or at least you better not get caught messing with it. <laughs> now, how do you know what your security clearance is? Well, names and paranoia follow a specific naming convention. First name, a dash, a letter indicating your security clearance. It's a little dark on there, I'm afraid, but that would be an R for that guy. Right clearance. So first name, dash, R for indicating the uh, red right clearance, another dash, and then the sentence in sector of orange. Or sector of orange, rather. So for example, a character named Spide R M A N uh, would be a red right clearance troubleshooter, uh, originally cloned in sector M A N, and his friends probably call him Spider. Your clearance will raise and lower throughout the game depending on how well you accomplish uh, certain tasks. Uh, basically, uh, the missions that you go on with your team are going to be how you uh, get your clearance raised, and uh, if you mess up, how you get lowered. Um, what about bribery and mask Does that work too? Uh, yeah, uh, I would say that those are uh, very effective, in fact. So, that's a, that's a tool at your disposal. What about a Sorry. So, let me talk now about uh, the secret societies. Uh, every person in Alpha Complex is a member of a secret society, and therefore all traitors. Uh, this year there's eight secret societies, and you troubleshooters are going to have a contest. A high programmer revealed to you at the beginning of the game that you should meet up with whenever possible, in secret, of course. This high programmer is the head of your secret society, Sector Con Branch, and is using one of the service groups in Sector Con as a cover for his illegal activities. Now, when you accomplish certain tasks for your secret society, you'll be rewarded with mutant power. Powers which are music of human combat, which we'll cover you know, in depth shortly. Now, to speak about your team. Without your team, you can't complete missions, and so you can't get security clearance upgrades, or get paid even. So, additionally, your team uh, receives points for completing missions, and those points are going to determine which team wins the day at the end of the day cycle. Now, I already mentioned death one time. Uh, everybody dies, but luckily you troubleshooters get clones to come back and take over where your former clones screwed up. So if you die, all you have to do is immediately go to Troubleshooter HQ, get your name tag punched, and uh, don't worry, there's uh, no ports looting in our game, so you get to keep all of your equipment. Uh, uh, funny side note, however, there is occasionally spawn camping. So uh, watch out for, troubleshooter, for uh, smiling troubleshooters bearing grenades. <laughs> 